season, I suppose momentum's important, isn't it? And you know, you've you've gone and got yourself a good point at, at Portsmouth now, and now it's a matter of building on that and generating some momentum. It is, it is. Uh, I think the performances over recent weeks, barring the Burton game, have been good and strong. Uh, so we're looking to to carry that on tomorrow. How do you do that though? When you you know when you're building on a performance like that, when you get into the players, what's that process like? Like I, like I always say, week in week out, we have a consistency way of working. Uh, reviewed the game, the good and the bad at Portsmouth, and then we're straight on to the next project, Cambridge. So that's been a con consistent way since I've been at the football club and my staff for the last 20, 27, 28 months, however long I've been here. So we, we continue to do that. What did you take out of that Portsmouth game that you were especially pleased with going forward? I thought the first half was as good as away performance, a difficult place to play. Uh, first half, I thought second half we, we lost control. We didn't didn't look after the transitions enough, we didn't look after the possession of the ball enough and we had a mad five minute spell where we lost a little bit of discipline and a, a little bit of calmness about our defending so other than that I thought we defended superbly uh, with you know what we got Sammy Robinson and Aaron Donnelly two very young lads in the, in the, in the back three we defended superbly for the ma majority of the game, but um, I, I put a lot of the second half performances of, of us not doing with things we did well in the first half with the ball. It's a big learning curve for a lot of these players, isn't it? And particularly, as you said there, the two younger lads, who you've, I know you've described as development players before, it's been a really steep learning curve for them. Hasn't it, it has, it has, and it's, uh, you only learn by playing games as well, uh, young, young development players. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a good learning curve for the football club, for me and myself and my staff and the players. Uh, of what League One's about, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very tough league. Uh, we've done ourselves justice so far in numerous performances, but as a club and as a as a first team environment and everything about the club, we need to we need to keep improving. When you've talked about each individual game as a project, what are the, the kind of major differences from last year that you've encountered when you've been building those projects for each game this year? It's quite, quite simple, better players. As you go up levels, the better players, bigger football clubs, um, bigger budgets, so they, that enables them to get better players. So you're coming up against a better standard player. So you're asking your players to step up to the plate, the ones that remain from last season, and and, and we're looking obviously in the recruitment side of things to try and bring better players into the football club, albeit getting uh, getting the right value for the for the money. And you're obviously fishing in a bigger pool now, aren't you? With 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 teams that have got. You know, no disrespect, but much more financial muscle. We've talked about that before, but when you go into that process now, how do you make Port Vale appeal to them other than the financial side of it? Yeah, listen, I think you know you're better off asking the players what the the environment and the the culture is about this football club. Uh, but for me, is is we we offer a lot of things. I think, uh, well, I don't think I've got a top class coaching team behind me. We've got top top class medical team now at the football club, in my opinion. We, we've uh, improved a lot of areas and we, we know it's a club where you can grow as a player. And uh, when I say grow as a player, that doesn't mean loads of youngsters coming into the building. You know, players of David Wall, we'll use an example who I think's improved this year. You know, always fell a little bit short maybe in his career at League One standard, but this year he's, he's done very well. And we, we, we try and keep embracing that improvement and environment that whatever age the player that comes in we we, we try and improve and uh, get them to become better footballers that's a really good point as well isn't it because it's not like you're just taking under 21s or, or younger development players you can develop senior players as well that must be a big selling point for the club too yeah certainly and and that's that's what we're about we're, we're about learning and, and and continue to try and improve and like I said we've, we've learned a lot a lot a lot of things this season uh, in in League One, and we need to continue to to improve all aspects of the of the club. What do you reckon to Cambridge? You had a very close game down there that you came out on top of, but they're still fighting for the lives. What are you expecting from them? Yeah, listen, uh, they had an excellent season, didn't they? The first season in League One last season, uh, real good, strong season. I think we finished on fifty eight points. Mm -hmm. This season hasn't been as good, and that's the competitive nature of the the division. Uh, they've got a talented manager there. I think I think he's uh, he's done a terrific job there, and they're fighting for their lives. So there's no easy games in this league. Uh, our pitch at times becomes a bit of a leveller as well, if I'm honest with you. 
but we have to put on a better performance than the last home performance and uh, I'm confident that we can do that. Does that drive you though, that, that last home game? Is not Everything it? drives me, I want to win football matches Phil, uh, every single match I want to win, so the, the driver for me personally is, is, al is always the case, so when the, the driver for players, every individual player has a, a different reason of, of why to perform, uh, I talk to this to my players all the time, they're their own manager is in how they look after themselves, how they eat, live, sleep, train, work hard. You know, they're they're in control of a lot of elements of their game as as, as players, and uh, they have to invest in themselves as well, so that they can go and earn the the figures that obviously have earned in the game as as, as footballers and try and reach their ceiling. Well, you've just alluded to, obviously, uh, you're not mathematically quite safe yet. And it's, from their point of view, the game is not a dead rubber, is it? It's going to be a very competitive game. No game I've managed our class as a dead rubber. Uh, and relegation, I don't think we've... Mike, Michael knows this, I don't think we've been in the bottom four season. So we're not even contemplating, thinking about that. We're looking up. We always have tried to look up. And that's what we'll continue to try and do. Cambridge are fighting for their lives. We want to get as many points from now to the end of the season to uh, finish as high up the season as we be uh, high up the table as we possibly can. And you want to finish on a high, if you that, but you want to get your performances, and you, we've seen your performances, but there's been a bit of a stutter lately, and you want to get back to the winning live, live don't you? Yeah, but, but listen, I like to like to think I'm honest. I think the performance over the last six or seven have been uh, have been decent, apart from the Burton game. So we got to we got to continue to to keep performing to levels, and then you pick up the points. It's all about your team. I know you'll assess Cambridge and you will have done your homework, but it's all about the way you set your team up now, isn't it? Now and get this run going. Yeah, it is, but we're very respectful of the opposition. Uh, they can play four formations. They've got flexibility within the squad. They've got a, a decent sized squad. He's got uh, Mark's got good options in there, so and some and some good names in his squad. So we, we respect the opposition, and yes, it's always a case of how we perform, how we defend, how we get how we perform with the ball and without the ball but we also respect every opposition we come up against On the injury front we okay Dale? Uh, I'll, I'll answer you know what I'm like George I'll answer any questions tomorrow after the game about who's missed out maybe because of injury uh, but I'm not I'm not going to do another manager's job for him today And finally for me Dale obviously you, I know you don't sit, get involved with <coughs> talking about officials but it's mooted that we will be having time wasting goalkeepers and outfield players particularly goalkeepers being booked next season for time wasting I mean, they catch the ball and drop to the ground and waste several seconds You uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, like I said I said it the other week about the, the I think uh, eventually it'll come to a stage where it's the ball in play that's what I think it'll come to I think uh, any team that's Winning in a game of football is going to try and use game management to uh, to try and see out the win, see out the victory. That's that's the nature of the beast. The referees are in control of this. Uh, they have to control it. They they're in charge on on the, the officiating of the game, and they have to the book or the, uh, do whatever thinks necessary within the rules. Thank you, Don. Don't the players still play for contracts at this, by this point of the season? The always, I think, Mike. Always. <laughs> Always, I think uh, the pressures of a, a lower league footballer is, is always the case. You've always got something to prove. And like I say, you, you keep learning about your players. So everybody needs to be aware of that. And that, that's even if they're under contract as well. I know it's, uh, I know they, they, they paid us a certain sum of money until their contract runs out. But uh, everyone, I always look at it, should never sit comfortably at a football club because comfortable is not the place I want I want players or anybody to be honest with you we want to be challenging and, and, and we want to be challenging the players to, to hit the levels As a manager is this stage of the season then become a, a challenge because some play, players will be thinking about contracts some the club might be talking to some you know things like that how, how does that It's, it's natural that the players will come and see you and come and speak to you I'm I'm honest I'm straight to the point uh, not just not just now, but as, as a regular regular basis to 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 what the players should be performing at and to to hitting the levels and then come the end of the season, I'll I'll look at it and look at it over the course of the season with my staff, with, with the recruitment team, and we we look in all areas of where we can uh, can get better. 
you mentioned Aaron Donnelly uh, a little bit earlier there. How pleased have you been with him and his, you know, his first taste of senior football? Delighted. I mean, 19 year old on his first loan throughout my managerial career. They're, they're tough to read the first loans. Are hardly going to do, but to play as many games as he has off the bat and hit very good consistency levels as well. And I think the kid's got a bright future. There was a, bit of a gamble in that respect when you take the youngster. Always is. Yeah. Always is. If you if you ever take in, uh, there's a gamble with every signing. To be honest with you, but. A first loan is even more so because they haven't played competitive games. They haven't played in front of a crowd. They don't, you know, the development football games are very similar. Whereas when they when they're out on loan, there is a there is a pressure on them, and it's how they perform. And a lot of footballers sink in those aspects because it's it is it is a pressure to perform. And there's a lot of footballers that have fallen by the wayside because they cannot handle match day pressure. 